Hi, I am Dr. Nain. I am an epidemiologist. Let's learn some epidemiology. Just because someone got exposed to something and they got sick doesn't always mean the two events are related. It may be because of chance rather than the cause. For example, it has been observed that higher cases of drowning reported when people eat ice cream. Are you kidding me? How is this possible? People go to beach and also eat lots of ice cream when it's hot. So ice cream clearly does not cause drowning. These two events often happen together so they are correlated instead. Making sense of epidemiological data is often hard. We should not jump to the wrong conclusion. There are numbers of reasons why we might see an association. It may be actual cause, pure chance, bias or confounding factors. Bias is because of the error in study design. For example, if we only observe people eating lots of ice cream from hot sunny areas without comparing them with anyone lives elsewhere or not eating much ice cream, the association between ice cream eating and drowning will seem very strong. So this result will be misleading and leads to wrong conclusion. On the other hand, confounding is where other factors confuse our interpretation of exposure and outcome. For example, suppose a study that suggests people who take more coffee are more likely to develop CHD. It would be tempting to conclude that coffee leads to CHD. But people who drink coffee also tend to smoke. Smoking is confounder here because it is associated with both coffee and CHD. It can make it look like coffee causes CHD if we don't take smoking into account. There are many confounders in real life some more obvious than the others. Hence, epidemiologists have to act like detective to figure it out which exposure causing disease and which one just seems so. Epidemiologists use statistics to find out what is relevant and what is not. One way to analyze data is to look at probability or p-value to determine whether the findings are true or are simply due to chance. Lower the p-value, more likely our findings are true and not just happen due to random error or chance. To indicate statistically significant results, epidemiologists consider a p-value of 0.05 or lower. In other words, we can say that there is less than 5% chance that the results are due to chance. However, p-value only helps us to point out whether study outcomes are due to chance or not. But it does not tell us how important or how strong the association is or its health implications. If the statistical analysis is not done properly, p-value can be misleading. For example, study shows that both smoking and processed meat significantly associated with cancer with p-value below 0.05. However, smoking increased chance of cancer 20 times compared to processed meat, which is on the increase 0.2 times, which is quite low compared to other risk factors. And that is why p-value is not enough. We need to know how large an effect is, known as effect size, not merely just effect is present or not. To summarize, role of epidemiologists is not that simple, but requires a hard work to conduct and conclude the epidemiological studies. Despite of these difficulties, epidemiology is crucial in preventing and promoting the health of the people. It is not just limited to recommending healthy lifestyle, but also important in reducing healthcare bills for large number of people. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next video.